here comes Pacquiao. In his last fight, he was the victim of a brutal siege of fouls by Agapito Sanchez in a fight which wound up in a technical draw in San Francisco. The fight was on HBO. It had the strong-minded Larry Merchant calling for Sanchez to be banned from boxing. Well, I don't know about Ben, but I'll tell you what, that was a really dirty fight. I saw the tapes of it, and it looked like it was street fight more than it looked like a boxing match. Prior to that, Pacquiao burst on the scene electrically in Las Vegas on the undercard of Lennox Lewis's knockout of Hazim Rahman with a sensational performance against Lechonola Ledwaba of South Africa. Ledwaba had looked like maybe the best in the division. Pacquiao blew him away. You know what, he might have gotten old in a day, Ledwaba, but either way, he got hit by a freight train, and that young kid came at him with punches and punches from every angle, aggressive, sharp, strong. I was very impressed. Unusual fighter, big punching southpaw. You don't see them all that often. It'll be Pacquiao's power against Julio's experience and craft as we get ready for this one. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee, we welcome you to our first championship bout of the evening. It's brought to you by Murad Muhammad's M&M Promotions. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest will be Paul Artiste, Bruce Foster, and Freddie Steinwinder. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Bill Clancy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing this is for the IBF Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing purple and weighing in at 122 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. It stands at 44 victories, including 32 knockouts with three defeats. From Montebello, California, here is the challenger, the former two-time world champion, El Conquistador, Jorge Elisier Julio. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trimmed with red and white, officially weighing 120 and one-half pounds. His professional record also outstanding, 33 victories, including 24 knockouts with only two defeats and one bout even. From General Santos City, Philippines, presenting the reigning, defending, IBF Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, Manny the Destroyer Pacquiao. Okay, gentlemen, 12 rounds for the championship. We went through the rules in the locker room. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Punches here are okay. Punches right here at the top are okay. Any questions? Touch gloves, good luck. Here we go, Freddie. Bruce, Paul, you ready? Pacquiao trained by the veteran Freddie Roach former protege of the great Eddie Futch, regarded by some as one of the very greatest of all modern trainers. Eliezer Julio, a part of the stable of uh, Ricardo Maldonado, who sent many top fighters into the ring. Fox. Maldonado was also the manager of Agapito Sanchez, who fouled Pacquiao so ruthlessly in San Francisco. And Freddie Roach said to us yesterday, I wouldn't be surprised if Julio tries to do the same doggone thing. Guilt by association, maybe. Or just trying to get Pacquiao ready to be more protected this time, perhaps. Freddie says he would like for Pacquiao to learn to foul a guy back when he fouls him. But Pacquiao's two sportsmen like to do so, he says. Well, I can't imagine. Anyone fouling me when I were fighting that many times, me not like get one back. Uh, so this must be a real good kid. Big left hand by Pacquiao. Julio stops him in his tracks there with a left hand counter. Both fighters using their jabs early, and uh, I think Pacquiao has already gotten some of Julio's respect for his power. I think so. You can see that Julio has got a concerned look on his face. You can see a little bit of strain in his eyes when he gets hit with some of those punches. Pacquiao can punch. When you come up to 122 from 118 and you get Manny Pacquiao in your third fight in the division, you may be biting off something more than you can chew. But Julio has a lot of knowledge and a lot of craft. 
Oh, big left hand by Pacquiao. And he got countered by a nice left hand counter by Julio. Sometimes the first couple of punches might rock you, but then you taste the power and sort of get used to it, right, Bobby? Well, you know, there are times that you can sort of adjust to it, but if you get caught one of those and you're not looking, I'll tell you what, your legs come right out from under you. When they catch you looking, boy, oh boy, it hurts so much more. Pacquiao with a body shot after missing with the wild right hand. You can see what a big hitter Pacquiao wants to be. Throws every punch with aggressive intentions. Julio, a little bit more of a change-up artist, and holding his own now after a rough first minute. And one of the things, there's a beautiful straight left hand by Pacquiao, but one of the things that's helping Julio is that jab. It's all setting the combinations of Pacquiao. Put your head. Put your head. Pacquiao saying it was an elbow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Keep up. And there's a low blow. So already an elbow and a low blow from Julio making contact with Pacquiao, and that's exactly what Freddie Roach suggested he thought might be the case. Punch that hard as Pacquiao is. Takes a lot of energy to start those punches. Oh, that's a huge left hand shot. And the right hand don't shot. Knock don't knock that. Don't pull him down, Manning. As I was saying, it takes a lot of energy to start those punches. If you don't hit something, it takes the same amount of energy to stop him. And you could get prematurely fatigued. You have to make those punches. Hit something. Body shot by Pacquiao. Julio seems a little bit flustered by Manny's power. And the first round comes to a close. Okay. And when we go to Manny Pacquiao's corner, where they may speak some Tagalog, our interpreter is Ernie Kalou. Okay. <laughs> All right, rinse it out. Okay, Manny, now here. I want you to use a jab a little bit more, okay? Yeah. All right. you, you're a little bit wide with your punches. Tell him not to pull his head down, okay? Yes, sir. All right, you're a little bit wide with your punches, okay? I want you to go behind the double jab. You hear me? Yeah. All right, that you gotta be smart. You know, make sure be first, okay? You hit him on the bottom, in the stomach. It hurts him. Come on, keep punching. You watch the combination. Pacquiao winds up throwing the left hand underneath, which is very good. But then his arm winds up getting wrapped around his head. You see it right there, and he just pulls him down to the ground. Thus the call of no knockdown when Julio went to the canvas. Now round two begins. Another straight left hand by Pacquiao. And you heard Julio's corner saying, hit him in the belly. And down goes Julio. It was a perfect execution of what he was told in the corner. Double jab and throw the left hand. He did it, and look what we see. The kid listens. Hey, come to me. Bueno. Bucks. Freddie Roach told him to go in behind the double jab and followed him with the left hand. He did it twice in a row in the second one. Dropped Julio. This is some prospect, Bobby. To me, he's every bit as exciting as Prince Nassim Hamed. He really is. He can punch. He can take a punch. He's aggressive. And he loves to fight. You okay? Second knockdown of Julio. No three knockdown rule in effect. I think Julio's going to have trouble finishing this round. I really do. Julio trying to fight his way back. A little grabbing and holding might be the thing to do. Pacquiao's just getting ready to swing away again. And Bill Clancy's seen it up. Devastating second round TKO for Manny Pacquiao. What a comeback from the misfortune of San Francisco. Very, very impressive against a fighter who is not that easy to beat. It's not easy to dominate. That I can tell you. I think the most impressive thing was exactly what you pointed out. Freddie Roach calmly said, double jab, and then follow with the left hand. He did it. He did it in the first 10 seconds, hit him good, followed up with it, and dropped him, and that was the beginning of the end for Julio. That's what I didn't see. This is for your family. The whole world, son. This is for your family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Bacchio feeling as though a great weight has been lifted from his shoulders. He was so disappointed by the technical draw in San Francisco. How one of the judges there had scored the fight with Sanchez in front remains an enduring small mystery of our sport. But all of that erased now as he blows away 
a good veteran fighter in Jorge, Jorge Eliezer Julio. That's what we call going back to your corner, getting the advice and making the adjustments instantly. He made the necessary adjustments. He came out and literally blew Julio out of there. He's dominant at 122. The money would be at 126 with Hamed, Barrera, Morales, and various other good fighters. Here are the knockdowns, Bobby. First knockdown, the jab, was, was that, that was the second jab with the straight left hand, and here comes the second. Again, the accumulation factor Ready? becoming a factor, banging him to the body, staying on top of the body, and then up top again with the straight left hand behind the jab. Eventually, the referee's gonna come in here. It's just teeing off on Julio, and Pacquiao definitely, definitely wins this fight at Preston. Pacquiao so quick, so aggressive, and hurt Julio so much in the first minute of the round that the veteran fighter never even really tried to grab and hold or buy time. You know, I don't know if that was just because he was so hurt or he just wasn't thinking or he just not the type of guy to do that, but he needed to hold on. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the Pacquiao TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Bill Clancy has to step in and call a halt to this bout. The official time, one minute, nine seconds of round number two. The winner by TKO victory and still the IBF junior featherweight champion of the world, Manny the Destroyer Pacquiao. Pacquiao.